it's time to break from that negative cycle. You stop doing things like how every other person does things. I will not operate under the crowd mentality, the mob mentality. I have come for an encounter. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 16. It's a scripture we know very well. So let's read as a mass quiet church. Are you ready? All right, let's read. One to go. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance. Media, can you take us back there, please? And left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. Please can we go to verse 12? Just jump to 12. Jump to 12. Okay, let's read church as a mask. I want to go. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Uh, and Gideon said unto him, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and developed us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might. Can we read again? Go back to, the, go back to that verse. And the Lord looked upon him. I, I can't hear your voice. Let us say it. I want to hear you. You are my choir. Want to go? God bless you. Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, go. That neighbor is a wrong neighbor. Find another neighbor. Tell your neighbor, go. Now find the third neighbor. Tell your neighbor, go. In this thy might. What is your neighbor saying? Are they going? Are some of them asking where are they going to? Go to where? Okay. Look at your neighbor and just say, go. go. All right, let's continue the next verse. The next verse. Verse 15. And he said unto him, Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Father, today we ask that this be all about you. Speak to us, O oh God, in a language that we understand. Father, we pray today you empower us. Prepare us, O oh God, and release us for the journey ahead. It will be a journey of wonders, a journey of exploits, a journey of evidence, and a journey of manifestation. Let your amen be the loudest. Your amen does not sound like you know that God just God is empowering you right now. Can your amen be the loudest? Yeah. Now, can you speak to your neighbor on the right and the left and tell your neighbor congratulations? You don't know why you're congratulating them, but congratulate them as you take your seat in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We know this scripture too well. But can I just do one aside? An aside before I get into what I want to say. The Lord just placed it in my heart now. It wasn't part of what I was to do in this service. But can I pray for anybody, anyone that is experiencing anything that looks like the Midianite? Anything that comes to steal, eat from you, leave you impoverished. If you are the one, just rise up. It's not for everybody, but just for people. That is as if there are things that come to leave you impoverished you are using your money to service negativities and at the end of the day it's as if you don't have enough anymore today i pray for you whatever be the spirit of median the medianized spirit as your amen will turn thy command let it break by fire i cannot hear your amen let it break by fire let it break by fire let it end right now end right now i don't know for some of you it's a family deliverance today i decree your family is delivered by fire delivered by fire we go to the foundations and we decree let it break by fire 
break by fire. Whatsoever our heavenly father has not planted, it shall be uprooted from the root. We uproot you from the root. We uproot you from the root. We decree the Egyptians you saw before you came today. You will see them no more. If your amen is the loudest, let a testimony come out of this. Please take your seats in the presence of God. So we are on our second Wednesday of Kingdom Exploits, the rise of wonderful men. And last week we started by laying foundations and we continue this week as well. And one thing you will know about exploits, today I want to look at exploits. And one thing you will know about exploits, I know you know about exploits, is that exploits are deeds. Exploits are acts. Acts, of, um, acts uh, that are heroic, memorable, or notable. That's what, you should, I hope you know, you know what exploits are, so they are acts, they are deeds that are heroic, or they could be memorable, or they could be what, notable. They are daring in nature. When we talk about acts, we are saying they, they come with so much audacity. So they are daring in nature, they are bold, they are audacious, they are adventurous, they are brave, they are fearless in nature. Ayakabasa. And today God is saying that he's equipping and preparing people that are going to do what, they are going to be fearless. They are going to do, your achievements and accomplishments will be the kind that people will look back and say it could not have happened by the finger of man. This can only be done by God. Who am I speaking to? So before the end of this series, men and women will rise from this house. They will rise from this house. Who will do exploits in business? They will do exploits in career. No, 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 this is not just, I'm not just saying it to make you say an amen, but if you know you're the one, your amen will be louder, the loudest. Men and women will rise out of this series. While the series is going on, by the time we get to the end and they will rise to do exploits in business in career and in ministry and wherever God has called you to, wherever God has called you to and this, wherever he has called you to, what is going to be happening is that he's releasing you to go there and do big things. Can you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I will do big things your neighbor does not believe you ignore that one, look at the next one tell your neighbor I will do big things Okay, can you rise up? Can you rise up? No, 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 no. This is prophetic. Find three neighbors. See, whether they believe you or not, it is inconsequential right now because you know that you are speaking the mind of God. Find three neighbors. Give them a high head. Tell them, I and not Jerry will do big things. And yet, they back off You may not look like it now, but neighbor, get ready. I will do big things. I will do big things. Some of you may make it seven people. I will do big things. Say it until you believe it. Say it until it Begins, becomes your reality. I will do big things. Uh. Do you believe it? You that has said it, whether you believe it or not, my faith is enough. As your two hands are lifted, you will accomplish big things. Uh. You will achieve big things. Uh. You will do big things. Uh. It is not next year, it is this year. Some of you, your own is starting March. Some of you, your own will start this weekend. Uh. If your amen is the loudest, let your own start today. Please take your seats. This is not meant to be. It's not a fast service. All right, let me quickly rush to verse 12. We know the scripture too well, so I'm not going to lay foundations. We know how the Midianites, how they, they came after the Israelites and how they were all scampering and hiding, went into caves and holes just to hide from the Midianites. And for every time they had a harvest, the Midianites would always come and take everything from them. And we know about this man called Gideon and how Gideon was also hiding actually, but he was doing something while he was hiding. He was threshing and the angel came to meet him there and God spoke to him while he was doing that. You know, so the verse 12 tells us, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Ayikoposha, the angel comes to this man that is hiding and tells him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Any man that would do exploits, please, when I use man, remember I'm referring to whether male or female gender. Any man that would do exploits must walk or operate with the revelation God gives him about himself you must work with the revelation God gives you about yourself it was not a revelation Gideon had about himself Gideon did not know who he was as far as Gideon was concerned he was one of the others that were running from the Midianites but God looks at him and says you are a mighty man of valor before you set out to do exploits you need to receive and know what revelation has God given me about me? 
When God gives the man a revelation about himself, he gives it from the future, not the present. He doesn't tell you who you are right now because you already know that. Your friends and everybody around you, men, know who you are right now. It is to only take God to reveal you to men. That's why even Paul will say, no, we know man according to the flesh. So I want to do exploits. God, reveal me to me. Show me the picture you have about me. Because you know what? One of the things that will ginger you and give you strength to do this assignment or to do whatever you have to do is the picture God has of you. If you walk with the picture you have of yourself, you may not step out of your house. You may not be able to talk to your boss. You may not be able to go and put in the application. You may not be able to speak out if you move with what you think about yourself. But when God begins to show you who you are, and you begin to meditate on it, and you begin to call yourself that name, it takes a mat it's just a matter of time. The next thing is that you begin to express that thing that you're calling yourself. Can you raise your hand and say, oh Lord, please reveal, reveal, reveal me to me. Show me who I am. For some of you tonight, may God in your dreams show you who you are. Oh, 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 while you pray, may God begin to open the picture. See, some of you, God has showed you two years, but he can still show you the next ten years. There's, some, some, there's still something that he hasn't still shown you about you. Can you say, oh God, please show me. Show me the picture you have of my tomorrow so that I can run with it. If you have made that prayer, let your amen be the loudest. So in verse 14, the Bible says, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I said thee? Any man that would do exploits, please hear me. Don't even take this casually. Any man that would do exploits, you must have might. Might. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, might. Ask your neighbor, do you know what might is? If you read Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, the Bible will talk about the seven spirits of God. And one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of might. And when you look at that word, the spirit, that word might, the term might used in this verse is a derivative of a Hebrew word called gibor. And gibor means strong. It means champion. It means mighty. Gibor means champion. It means strong. It means mighty. And I want to take the word strong. So no, no wonder when you go to Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The Bible will now say that they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Can we read that scripture together? In, 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 uh, can we read it together? They that do know their God shall be what? Strong. Daniel 11, 32. Are they there? And such as do. We can, okay, yes, the B part, the B part. But the people that do know their God shall be what? Strong and do exploits. You're not, you're, not, you're not responding like you're with me. Let's read it together. And the people that do know their God shall be strong and do what? Exploit. So, you cannot do exploits without strength. You cannot move from knowing God to doing exploits. Where's the scripture? Let me, let me look at it. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The condition for exploits is, is here. You can't jump from here. I know God, but you can't jump from here to exploits. Knowing God cannot just be equals to exploits. You will know God, then you'll be strong. Be because is more or less become. Being strong, it is the strength that will deliver what? Exploits. So, Yikabasha, so God looks at Gideon and says, Thou mighty man of valor, and says, Go in this thy might. Ayikaba, there is a strength for exploits. Alibraka, I must receive strength to do exploits. If not, Ayikabada, you would get tired too soon. You will burn out too soon. If you don't receive strength, you will burn out. So when the spirit of God, when one of the spirits of God is might, you know what that means? It is God, it is the manifestation of God. Whenever he wants to show up as strong, he manifests himself, the Holy Spirit manifests himself as the spirit of might. Anytime he wants to show up strong, show up strong, whatever it is, he, it, he will manifest himself what? As the spirit of might. If there is one prayer you will pray, you put your hands on your head and say, Lord, release your might upon me. Asula Brakayada, release might upon me. See, when we say exploits, it means that we are going to be busy. It means that we will get busy. No matter how busy you are, get ready. There is another side of busy that you are about to be unleashed to. So you need what? I need might. I need strength. 
strength. Can someone say, oh Lord, I need strength for the journey. I receive strength for this journey. Oh, Yakaba, God forbid that God will reel out so much for you to do, but you will not have energy of the spirit in order to drive the process. I need strength for this journey. You'll be calling, praying, mini, ministry, ministry doors open. They will begin to open if you don't have strength. You will not be able to attend them. You will not be able to deliver as much as God has put inside of you. Oh, I want the contract. God gives it to you, but if you don't have strength, it will become a problem. Can someone say, Lord, release strength uh, in my inner man? Uh, I can hear you say, Lord, release strength in my inner man. Uh, hear me, some of us have the best ideas. But there's no strength to execute it. Some of us know where we ought to be. We know. We know what we ought to do. But there's no strength to take us through that journey. Some of you sitting here with me, me and you know. That you know. That if only you can do midnight prayer. You know what your life will become. But there's no strength for midnight prayers. There's no strength for prayer. You know that if I can be consistent, the way my life will change. If I can do this thing two months, three months, consistently, the way my life will change. But there's no strength. And today we are saying, God, I, I know what I need to do, but I need strength to do it. Who is that person that is saying that prayer? God, I know. I know what I need to do. If I can do, um, 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 I know this is what will happen, but I need strength. Today I pray for you. Receive strength for more. Receive strength for your journey. Receive strength for your assignment. I cannot hear your amen. You may not have started your assignment yet because you haven't become strong yet. Maybe that's why you have not started. See, exploits. Please go back to exploits. Uh, Daniel 11, 32. Exploits. They that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Exploits is where we all want to be. Today we're looking at kingdom exploits. The rise of wonderful men. Kingdom exploits. This is where we all want to be. But please, if you don't have strength for the assignment, you can't get to the exploit. Some of us, you see, the challenge we have is that we are strong in some areas. We are not strong in some areas. But we are saying, God, you know what? We need all-round strength. There's, there's something called all-round strength in every area. I need to be strengthened in every... See, see, there's something like strength in your inner man. Strength in your body. Strength in your mind. Strength in your spirit. Strength in purpose. Strength in character. A Jacob, strength is not just physical strength. It comes in every area. I can, you see, if your mind is not strong, if you're mentally drained and tired, you can't do much. So I say strength in my faith, strength in purpose, strength in character, strength in consistency. Can someone say, oh Lord, all round, all round strength, all round strength. Strength in character is very important. In the place of integri integrity, strength. Every area, there must be strength. Verse 14 says, I have to run. The Lord said to Gideon, go in this thy might. After you receive might, the next instruction that follows is go. I'm just taking time to break a few things because we are still laying foundations. As soon as you have received the might, the next instruction you should be waiting to hear is go. Go means what? It's a command one. But go is that God is saying, I am the one that is carrying you. I am backing you up. There is a backing up you need from God that when you look at sickness, you can pray over that thing because you know, I did not come here by myself. Someone sent me. So because he sent me, I am saying it on what he has sent me to do. So I go. If you have not heard go, don't move. You need that word. You need it. You need to hear go. Check Moses. Even when Moses was in the burning bush and God looks at him and says, yes, I want you to go and show yourself to Pharaoh. He told him, go and show thyself to Pharaoh. There is a go that I need. And for some of you, God told me that even this meeting, this theme that we are looking at today, today, is his release. He's releasing that word to you and telling you, you know what? It's time to do what? To go. It's time to face the giants. It's time to face the situation. It's time to do that thing that you have never been able to do. Stop waiting and say, no, I cannot do it. It's time to do what? Go. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, it's time to go. Tell your neighbor, it's time to go. It's time to go. You, no, no, no. You're not saying it to your neighbor like your neighbor knows that something is about to shift. When you move out tomorrow at the workplace, you always remember that word, go. Are you couple? Look at that neighbor. Tell your neighbor, it's time to go. Tell your neighbor, go. Tell your neighbor, go. 
go and become go and do it you have what it takes go ayika poshayada esuyada libra kosha esuyada it is the energy of the spirit in the word go it's being released. And he says, Ayikoposha. When God says you should go, remember, don't forget it. It's him backing you up. It's him backing you up. So I did not come by myself. When you finish praying in the night and you come out and you meet situations, you address it because you know where you're coming from. That is the word go. Ali broko shayada. Anybody that is going to do exploits, you must know when to do what? To go. To move. And the Bible says in verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said. Go in this thy might. Gideon this assignment. I know I've talked about might. But when God said go in this thy might. God was saying Gideon. This assignment needs might. Somebody here. Might is important. But do you know what your assignment needs? Every assignment has what it needs. There are requirements that are generic, but there are requirements that are specific for an assignment. Do you know what your assignment needs? For somebody, your assignment may need counsel. Your own may need knowledge. Your own may be a combination of different things. But do you know what it is? In this season, you'll be asking God, what does my assignment need? Or for some of us, God, what is the assignment? But you see, the beautiful thing about your assignment and as about what it needs, is that even Gideon, that didn't even know he had an assignment, and God was telling him that this assignment is might, and you have it. And I've come to speak to everybody. God says, for everyone sitting and listening to me, what you need is already inside of you. Whether you know it or not, it's locked up inside of you. Oh, Gideon, did you know you had might? No. Did you know you were a man of valor? No. But where was it? It was inside of me. And God knows when you are ready. When you are ready, he knows. A libro kosha, out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters. Ayikoposhayada. It is the Bible that says in 2 Corinthians 4 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So, what I need has been deposited inside me. It's just that for some of us, some of us need to stay our own. Some of us need to build our own. Some of us need to ayakupa kata libre ketupata. It's there, iyakupasha. It may be lying in an inactive state. Dormant, ayikaba. But it's inside of you. What you need for the assignment has been put in you. The treasures are there. You don't even have an idea who you are. That is why the enemy fights you the way he fights you. Because he knows. He knows if he leaves you who you will become. What you will do to him. So he is seeing all of that. And he is fighting now. And my mother told me a story of what they wanted to do to me when I was small. And they wanted to take me and make me. It was an occultic thing. And make me. Is it the, uh, the, this temple? Whatever. And this was at the age of 11 or 12. And my mother fought with her life. And said it's a lie. My only daughter, you will not do it. Today, whenever she sees me, she says, Hi! This was what the enemy was trying to stop. If he got you then. She fought with her life. She, the fights and quarrels, a lot of it was dependent on will she release me to go and do that in an occultic place. And she says, it's a lie. I will not allow her. She didn't know so much of God. But she says something. She had not become born again. But she said something to her. No. She should fight this one. And she fought. It is the same way some of us are sitting. We have had things that she wanted to take us. But God, I, the devil fighting, fighting, fighting for your life. Because he knows if he leaves you. And I have sworn I will terrorize the kingdom of darkness. Until I die, I will give him trouble for trouble. The, see the mistakes the devil is to make anytime he tries to touch me in anything, I will look at him if I say the mistake you made is that you came near me if I come out of this, what I will do to you, you have not seen it yet can someone shall fire, can someone shall fire, we are not here to joke do you know what the kingdom of darkness is doing, we are here to depopulate the kingdom of darkness and populate the kingdom of light we are not here to sit on tables sit in chairs and look prettier we are not here to take no for an answer we are here 
prepared to do exploits. However, God will send us. Uh, we are ready to go. Uh, we are waiting for the commander. Lord, where you send us, uh, we will go. Uh, we are just waiting to hear the word. Go. And Ayana Makosha sold Ayana Nemetua. The angel looks at Gideon and says, Gideon, the mighty man of valor. He looks at him again. And Gideon talks story, story, story. He says, Go in this thy might. What you need is might. You have it. Go, Ayadaba. I'm sending you. But he goes ahead and says, Have not I sent thee? You know what that means? Gideon, yes, might is needed. But you know what? Water. Might is not enough. Might, you need it. But might is not enough. As you go with might, don't forget for one day. I'm the one that sent you. So when the accolades come, when the praises come, when the exploits come, when the evidence come, when the answers come, let it not enter your head for one moment and say, it's because I have might. It's because I have CV. It's because I have experience. It's because I know how to do it. It's because of the connection. I will never give the credit to man. I will never give the credit to myself. I understand. He says, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So the saving of Israel is in what? It's not in the might. Remember when you see pom pom in the scripture. The saving of Israel is not in might. You have what it takes. But you see this thing, this salvation, this deliverance that will come is not in might. Might is necessary. But it's not might that will deliver it. What will deliver it is this. Once I am sent, once I know who sent me, that is what will deliver the result. So I move in understanding that I, I have one commanding officer. I listen to one voice. Uh, and when he sends me, uh, I go in that direction. When he says, come back, uh, I come back. Uh, I follow instructions through. If I would do exploits, I must be a man, a woman, a student of obedience. I must know. My ears must be open to listen. Know when he says, move right, I move right. Come back, I come back. Go forward, I go forward. It was only at that command, go in this thy mind that Gideon could have started going to wherever. But if God didn't say it, Midianites would have finished him. Can you raise your hand and say, oh Lord, send me. Oh Lord, send me. Some of you need to ask God to open your ears to hear. Oh God, open my ears. Some of us have not been obedient. The instructions God has given you, it looks too difficult. Fast for this time. Pray by this hour. And you have been struggling with it. Lord, help me. Strength to obey. You need strength. There is strength for obedience. Strengthen me in the place of obedience. Can you raise your hands? Let us make a prayer we haven't made yet. Say, oh Lord, show me what my assignment needs. What my assignment requires. So that I can grow it. So that I can nurture it. So that I can build it. Let your amen thunder three times. Please take your seat. Let me see if I can run. I have to end now. Verse 13 says, And Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? God finished speaking to Gideon. He has even told you you are a mighty man of value. Gideon is not even interested in who God is calling him. Instead, he is now asking God a few questions of God now. If, if, if all these things, see, they are, we have a record. There's a record our father gave us. Our father has told us that this is, the, the God we are serving is a God of supernatural. He's the one that parted the sea. He's the one that did this and this. Why aren't we seeing these things? You know what Gideon was saying? I need evidence. Exploits is, must come with evidence. No evidence, then there's no exploit. God, I need evidence. We cannot keep saying God is good. And yet, people are asking, show us how, where is the goodness? We cannot keep saying God is good. They look at you. They say, it, it does your life look good? We must look like what we are saying. Ayiko Shayada. 
we must look like what we are confessing. Ayikopo, God, Ayikopo, Alipoko Soyada. Some people tonight, your own is evidence. Lord, the evidence that will back up what you are doing in this season, let it be released upon me. Gideon was looking for something. Oh, he was just saying, Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles? We, I, we want to see something. There's something we will see, we will know that yes, God is with us. Can someone scream evidence? Can someone Someone say evidence by fire. No, no, no. This is not for everybody. 20 of you. Can you say evidence by fire? Evidence by fire. Evidence by fire. Who is crying out for evidence? Say evidence by fire. Evidence by fire. Can you shout fire? Can you shout fire? Can you shout fire? You shout fire? Let your amen thunder. Please take your seat in the presence of God. So Bidion was speaking and he was saying, this was restlessness speaking. This man was restless. He was saying there's got to be more. Where are the miracles? Let there be a breaking out of miracles. Let there be is something I have not seen before. Let it begin to happen. Uh, and this was a man that was not afraid to confront the normal. He was not afraid. Do you know what it means to stand before an angel? To stand before God and talk. Gideon was not afraid. Gideon did not hide. Instead, he's there having conversation, asking questions. Who born you? Which man are you using to ask questions? He was asking questions. I want to do exploits. You must become restless. I want to do exploits. You must be able to confront the normal. What is normal? You must confront status quo and say, I will not accept status quo. Something must change. If my family cannot remain like this, why did God bring you to streets of joy? Streets of joy is not like every other place. Why am I here? It's so that I will look at the enemy, eyeball to eyeball. Look at what is happening in my family and say, eh, this far, no further. No further. Yakaposha. Can someone scream evidence? Oh, if your amen is the loudest, let there be a less than 24 hour evidence. Let there be evidence in ministry, evidence in business, evidence in career, evidence in academics, evidence over the works of your hands, evidence in the life of your children, evidence over your prayers. Lay your amen on that three times. So Gideon, when God met Gideon, Gideon, and says, Gideon, go in this their might. God was saying, Gideon, you know what? This thing you just said has just confirmed what I came to do. You are ready. Can we go back to that scripture? You are ready. When he started, go back to verse 12. When he began and he says, and the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now, the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. If you go to verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Gideon, you are ready. You see this response you gave me? You are ready. You may not even know you're ready, but God knows when you're ready. God knows when you're ready. Gideon had no idea that all this while he was hiding in that corner, God was preparing him. Gideon did not know that the work he was doing every day and every other day was his preparation ground. Where did might come from? Where did he become a mighty man of valor? He was not fighting battles. But there were preparations God was taking him through. Then God speaks to him. He answers God. God says, Gideon, you are ready. And today God says, there are men and women sitting here that are ready. You are ready for the assignment. And today the word you are hearing from God is, He's releasing you. A libro called Shakata. It's not for everybody. But you see everyone that God has prepared. Your days of preparation. Why for some people, you are still in that place of preparation. He's getting you ready. But the truth is that once you are ready, you don't need to know you're ready. God will launch you out. God will announce you. Today I pray for everyone. In this season of exploits, any man and woman that is ready, may the Lord launch you out. Launch you to your generation. Make a space for you. You did not hear me. He's creating space. He's create I heard him say, I'm creating space for them. He's creating space for you. Occupy, rule, take over. Let your aim thunder. Let your aim thunder. And Lord, for everyone that you're still prepare it. Whatever it takes, Lord, let them go through the process and come out as gold. Uh. Let your amen thunder. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready. Uh. Oh, your neighbor is not here. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready. 
tell your neighbor, I am ready. I'm ready. Oh, can you say it one more time? The Lord has sent me. Uh, now find your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm a sent man. I'm a sent man. I have an assignment. Uh, oh, rise up, rise up. Sent people, please rise up. It's not for everybody, but if you're a sent man, rise up. Find two neighbors, tell your neighbor, I'm a sent man. I have my assignment. Uh, I have an assignment. Uh, I am ready. Uh, I'm going uh, in my might. Uh, I'm going uh, with all I need. Uh, I rule. Uh, I dominate. Uh, I take over by fire. I have my evidence. So if you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. And I'll end here. A few requirements. Sit down, please. And I'll end here. A few requirements for those that will do exploits. Simple things, you know, but very important. And I'm going to lump them in one thing. Boldness. Audacity. Courage. Boldness. Audacity. Courage. Can you say it with me? Can we make an acronym? A, B, C. Anyone you want. A, B, C. A for audacity. B for boldness. C for courage. A for what? I cannot hear you. A for what? B for what? C for what? Do you like A, B, C or you want back? You like back. B for what? A for what? C for what? Cab. Cab. Another one. C for what? A for what? B for what? Is there any other one? B, C, A. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. B for what? C for what? A for what? We are doing this thing so that you can never forget it. So we have A, B, C. We have B, C, A. We have B, A, C. We have C, A, B. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm the one. Uh, which one do you want? Let us use it. Which one are we going to use? Look, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, A, B, C. Some people like, okay, who, who wants A, B, C? Which one? Let's see hands. Oh, yeah, put that hand. B, C, A. You put like B, C, A because yeah, you know why. <laughs> I think B, A, C, B, C, A is B, A, C. C, A, B. So B, 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 C, A has won. All right, so wherever you are, B for what? C for what? A for what? Find a neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm bold. Uh, I'm courageous. Uh, I'm audacious. Uh, find a neighbor and do rub it in their face. Uh, say it like you know it. You are a lion, like a lion. Say, I am bold. Uh, I am audacious. Uh, I'm courageous. Look at that negativity. I say, I'm bold. Uh, I'm audacious. Uh, I'm courageous. Uh, receive it right now. Uh, receive the spirit of boldness. Uh, the spirit of audacious. Uh, receive courage. Uh, I cannot hear your amen. When the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, the disciples, the apostles, in Acts chapter 2, if there was one thing that happened, they became bold. Peter that hid when Jesus was being taken to be crucified and he denied Jesus three times. They asked Peter, don't you know him? Nah, I don't know him. And he did it three times. Why did Peter do it? Fear. But by the time the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 came like a mighty rushing wind and came upon them, that same Peter that hid stood before a crowd and started talking about Jesus. We are not drunk. These men are not drunk. By the time he spoke, 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 the Bible says on that day, about 3,000 people were added to the church. Look at your neighbor again. Tell your neighbor, I am bold. I am courageous. I am audacious. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I will not fear their fear. I will not fear their fear. I arise uh, as a giant. Uh, I take my place. Uh, I occupy my space. Uh, anybody blocking me, uh, what do you have to tell them? Fire! Shout your fire! Shout your fire! If you believe it, let your amen thunder seven times. Can you celebrate God?